So I wanted to do another video for two reasons. One is because I'm working on my speaking skills this season, and two is because I shared the story with someone the other day and it reminded me of how important it is. Um, so if I look and sound like I've been crying, it's because I have. I've done this video a few times and each time it's just getting deeper and deeper, um, the reality of the situation. And God's kind of revealing some things to me as I'm saying it. Uh, so here we go. Um, this is going to be really honest. When I started church, I was very selfish. And I don't mean selfish like a character trait. I mean selfish like the definition of. That was me as a person. So, all my life, I was all about me. And here I am in church, and I you can probably imagine how well it goes over being a Christian and being all about you. It doesn't last very long if you're actually a Christian. Um, so, I remember being in a service, and it was, I think, a back-to-school service for the youth, and I wanted no part of it. I wanted to get something for myself, and this was not something I could find a way to benefit me. So, I remember being angry, like, I couldn't get anything out of the service, why would you have a whole service for youth? And God being God, later put a passion in me for youth. So I started working with the youth, and there was a girl who I had to take home one night, take the back, I don't want to say had, I had the privilege to take this girl home, and found out she doesn't live very far from where I was living. And I started picking her up for church and taking her home and taking her to youth events. And then I started picking up other youth girls. And we started going out after the services and getting food and just building a relationship and investing in each other's lives. Um, so this particular day, something had happened to me. And it obviously wasn't that important because I don't even remember what it was. But in that moment, it was the end of the world. And I was driving her home and I am just talking about how I don't think I can do this. This is too hard and all of these things that I thought were not what I thought they were. and I can't even remember all of the things. Maybe because I don't want to. <laughs> but I don't know if you've ever heard silence while you're talking like all of a sudden you just feel it and I stopped and I looked over and I'll never forget what happened I'll never forget seeing her face as she was looking down and she said in Sunday school this morning they asked us who our mentors were and in this moment I'm already <laughs> I'm already guilty. I already know what I'm doing, what I was in the process of doing. And then she asked me a rhetorical question. Do you know who I said? I said you. And for the first time in my entire life, I felt complete and utter selflessness. And everything that I thought was so horrible didn't matter because God had given me a relationship with this girl and a place in her life to speak truth and protect her and invest in her and I was damaging her and I could have just quit she thought I was going to abandon her that's what she was afraid of and I could have me being me and flesh, I could have dropped her off and never went back. And I don't know where she would be and I don't know where I would be. But I thank God that I didn't, not because of me, but because God gave me the love for her and the purpose. And that she received that and spoke those words to me because it changed my entire walk with God. I knew in, the, in that moment 
that I couldn't be who I was who I was anymore. I had to change because for whatever reason, God chose me to speak into her life. I was far from perfect. I wasn't even in church that long. But he chose me. So whatever he had to do through me, it was going to be enough. And I had to give it my all because he'd shown me her purpose. He'd shown me the things that were going to happen and who she was going to be. And I knew that it was the love of God because there was nothing that was going to stand in my way of helping her get there. And there's still nothing to this day. And that's only through the love of God, which I know. <laughs> Not only from that moment, but because I had my own mentor, Pam Denny, who I put through a lot, a lot of stuff. And then I got to turn around and feel some of that on the other end as you're helping people grow. It's messy, raising spiritual babies. Um, I lost my place because I got all emotional, I'm sorry. Um, where was I? So anyways, um, I knew that I had to change and I wanted to, it was worth it. And I still get to see her on Facebook and she's going right where God wants her to go. She's being that person. And later I was able to start mentoring Jonna. And when I went back to visit, I got to go to a service where she was singing and just seeing them grow is so worth everything that we had to go through to get there. Um, they're incredible. So if God has allowed you to speak into someone's life and mentor them, take it very seriously. I cannot stress that enough. Take it seriously. You have got to give your all. It's not about you. How you feel, what you're going through, doesn't matter. The same thing, if you have a mentor in your life, know that we love you, love you deeply, and we will fight for you even when it feels like we're fighting with you. Because we say things because we care enough to say them. Even though we're gonna sacrifice your emotions towards us, you may be angry, you may be offended, and it's gonna hurt us, but you're worth it. It's what we do. So please, if you have mentors in your life, listen to them, take it easy. When the enemy tells you things that you know are not true, remind yourself who they are and what they've done, and this is not for them, it's for you. So it's a two-sided lesson tonight. If you are in that position, step up, stop being selfish. And if you have a mentor, listen and cooperate, because they care. <laughs>